are live. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Happy, happy Tattoo Tuesday. We are going to have a great morning together. About for the next hour or so, we're going to hang out and I am going to um, share with you some tips and some tricks on how I have um, learned to battle tattoo pain. I mean, okay, I love it when people are like, did that hurt? And I'm like, yes, I am going to, I am 100% going to tell you right now, tattoos hurt. They have different levels of hurt, but I've never had a tattoo that didn't hurt. Um, except for maybe when I was a kid and I got like a fake tattoo out of the, um, the gumball machine, but all the real ones do hurt. But I think that that is part of the um, the draw of it. I think that's all part of the journey. Good morning, Ellie. Good morning, Tiggy. We have Linda. We have Lauren. Good morning, everyone. So to me, part of the whole tattoo pain is all part of the experience. That is just part of it. April says ink is the best. Tattoos are actually very therapeutic for me. I have fibro. Yes. And they are therapeutic. And that's just the weird thing. And it's like, Sometimes I know that I get a lot of tattoos for um, things that have happened in my life, like my parents passing away, my sister passing away, um, all, all sorts of that. But actually having a physical pain that went with it almost was therapeutic. It's like I had a physical pain that helped me with my emotional pain. And just having those two um, kind of pains mesh together was again, really therapeutic. Um, April says, ink is a statement. I'm just not one for putting it on my face. No, thank you. You know, I've always said that I am not opposed to face tattoos and I'm still not opposed to them. Um, will I wake up one day and be like, hey, I wanna have a, a tattoo on my face? Possibly. Do I have one planned right now? No. If I was gonna get one, I would get freckles. I think freckles are so darn cute. Ellie says, I will be getting a birth flowers for my mom, dad, and sister that passed away. <gasps> Ellie, I got my, my mom, my dad, and my sister. So this is my arm, it is a complete memorial to my mom, my dad, and my sister. So before we get into the whole tattoo thing and all of uh, and um, the pain, I just want to... Um, you to know, I had originally had planned on doing Tattoo Tuesday about those really cool ladies, the ladies in their 70s or 80s that I showed that had all the face tattoos and were heavily tattooed. Um, hello, Kelly. And it, I, I realized yesterday when I was putting everything together that that's what I talked about last week. And I'm like, you know what, Lonnie, you got to move on. You just have to move on from the subject that you're never too old for tattoos. I'll be talking about it again, but it is not the main focus of where I want to put my, my, my energy for tattoos today. Melissa asks, is the upper arm painful? This area? No. This area? Yes. So, I was like, no, 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 no. Let's not talk about age and tattoos because truthfully, I'm over it. I got a comment yesterday about somebody who was like, I'll read the comment and then we're going to move on because this is just the kind of baloney that happens. And I just, you know, I'm over it. I'm over just giving them any sort of, um, any sort of energy. So the comment that I'm talking about was on YouTube and it says, whose granny is this? Come get her. And I'm just like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to let that one just fly. So I responded and I said, do you know how old this comment is? Please take the extra effort and insult me with something new. That is the least you can do. Thanks. And it's the truth. You know what? If you want to come at me and you want to try to insult me with age, at least have enough respect for me to come up with a new, re a new insult. You know what? It's old, it's boring, and I'm tired about it. It is, it, and the whole thing is April is, I don't care. What irritates me is when you're so freaking lazy that you just have to pull this insult out of the air that you, that is so redundant. So 
if you're going to insult me, have at least the 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 for the the imagination to come up with something new. I mean, be like you're short, or you know what? It's like something else besides age, but it is old and it is boring. And I think the more that we have that attitude of like this is so 1993 we are going to just be able to just rise above it and it's going to bounce off of us like those little gnats that get caught in my a little uh, my little fl my little fly catcher thing that i got from amazon so and it was with that attitude that i'm like no i'm not going to give this morning show any more energy on that subject than i have to because i don't want to be recirculating that conversation so if it comes up, yes, I will absolutely mention it, but that's not where I'm going to focus my attention because my attention is about spreading more positivity and information than just constantly harping on how old I am. I'm 58 years old. I'm going to be 59 in August. I know how old I am. It's on my driver's license and I was there when I was born. So you ain't telling me anything new when you're telling me I'm old. Kelly says, people can be so damn rude. You're so hip, they just don't know how to act. Yeah, you know what, Kelly, and that's the thing. And it's so funny is that these people don't really realize is that they they fit in a mold, so they are the repetitious ones. Um, Shema B says, whoever wrote that is jealous of you. I think you're amazing. Well, thank you very much. And again, they just fall into this mold of like, I already know who you are by your comment. And yes, Melissa, this is my new free people jumper. I'm going to show it to you really quick and then we're going to get on the subject. But this is the extra small and um, ooh, Kelly's an August baby too. What day in August? And here's the jumper. It's Sue. It's super cute. I don't know why I didn't like it the first time I tried it on when I was in the store, but I'm going to tell you right now, this is a, um, it's a jumper, not an overall. And by that, I mean, there are no buttons on the side. So I had to like put it on. I, I'm going to say it again, but I'm on a mission to lose a little weight because I feel like I'm just carrying around a lot of, um, Kelly. Okay. Mine's the fifth, but we're both still Leo's. I feel like I'm just carrying around some extra water weight. So I am again on a mission to, to drop that because I've noticed I'm carrying it in my face and that really bugs me. But this is a size extra small. It fits really well. Putting it on was a little, like I said, a little, a little challenging over my hips. But once I had it on, it stretched out perfectly and I think it fits nice. The, the denim is absolutely nice and um a nice lightweight denim like i said the straps are adjustable so there you go oh my daughter is lani on august 15th wow that's that's really very like close and very cool all right so let's talk about tattoo pain yes tattoos hurt i have never had a tattoo that doesn't hurt but again that is all part of the attraction of getting a tattoo now, tattoos, different tattoos, um, a little shimmy action. Yeah, I was like, come on, girl, you got it. Just kind of like, you know, get into it and get it up here and get it up there. And once I did that, I was fine. So I'm going to be talking about tattoo pain, and I'm going to be referencing it as peppers, okay? Now, I'm not talking about like salt and pepper. I'm talking about like chili peppers, all right, because if you try to explain, Lauren, my birthday is on the 30th of May. Oh, well, you just had a birthday, so happy just birthday. Um, let's see here. What do you think of the new tattoos that look like veins? I think it's kind of icky. Yes, I, I, I don't, I don't understand. Kelly, thank you so much. I don't understand why anybody tattoos on things like like that. But again tattoos are so personalized. I mean, I would never ask anybody, why do you tattoo that on your body? Because it meant something to them. And if, and I think it's kind of ick, but each to their own. Now, um, okay. So tattoo pain, as far as peppers, because a lot of times I try to explain 
a tattoo like, oh, it hurt kind of like this or it hurt kind of like that. And I was getting my shin tattooed and I was sitting there and I was talking to my artist, Brian, and we started associating tattoo pain um, with jalapeno peppers. Okay. So you have, because I can explain that to you. I can be like, hey, have you ever had a banana pepper? And you'll be like, yeah, you know what? I had some on my sandwich the other day. It gave it a nice little taste. And then I can be like, oh my gosh, have you ever had a habanero pepper? And you can be like, oh my gosh, yeah, I ate it. And I was like, just like, ah, uh. that is how tattoo pain rates. All right. So we have banana pepper. We have a hot, we have a jalapeno pepper. We have a habanero pepper, and then we have a ghost pepper. And that's how I rate the tattoo. So basically just sitting there and you can be like, oh yeah, no, I'm getting a tattoo. This is great. I'm talking to my artist. That's a banana pepper. And then you could be like, um, oh my gosh, the only thing I can do is concentrate on breathing because I have to get through this. That is a ghost pepper. So as I explain my tattoos and where they're at, I'm going to tell you um, the pepper pain scale on where it is. Now, Christine Coco says, good morning, Lonnie. How old were you when you started your tattoo journey? I'm sorry if you mentioned that before. Nope, no worries. I always like to share this information, but I was 30 years old when I started and I'm going to be 59 in August. So I'm going on 29 years of tattoo, um, tattooing. So, and, and the crazy thing is, is that I have been getting tattooed longer than a lot of people on this app have even been born. And so it is such an honor. It is such an honor to be able to be like, you know what? I've been where you are. I have um, some stories. I have some experience and I'm going to share it with you. And to me, it's a great honor. Now, New Scrapbook says, I got a tattoo of some flowers, black and white. How can I make it pop more? Um, what should I add? See, now that's, I get this question a lot and I'm going to try to answer it for you. So if you have black and white tattoos, I, adding more ink is just going to make it darker. But maybe what you can do is like um, maybe lighten up the background or something like that. Um, but I would definitely, if you're trying to change anything about a tattoo, whether you're trying to lighten it up or anything like that, go to a tattoo artist that is, um, a cover up specialist, because by you changing the color of your tattoo is basically like a cover up and you want to make sure that you're not going to just make it darker and muddier. That's my advice. So. Let's start with some painful tattoo spots. Now, remember, um, I have all of these, and then I'm going to tell you exactly where Brian and Austin um, told me they think the most painful spots are. Kelly says, my daughter has wanted a tat forever. She is 17, and she has it all picked out and is just waiting for her age. Pick one that is classy and save the money herself. Should I just sign to get it done early? Kelly, I'm going to tell you right now, this is probably a really unpopular answer, but I'm going to say no. Um, just for the simple fact that I think that some things just need to be waited for and some things just need to be earned. And she sounds like a great daughter. Um, but I would definitely just, to me, it's so, I could understand as a mom being like, yes, you know what? You're awesome. You know, um, you've done so well, here's your reward. But in the long run, I think it is in her best interest to wait. And TikTok is also agreeing with you and with me that waiting is absolutely the rest, rest thing to do. And it might be a really fun thing to do for her 18th birthday and just kind of like, um, just go with that. And as a mom, I understand how it's like, well, I just want to reward my kid for doing the right thing. And personally, I think I did that too much as a mom. So it looking back in hindsight, I would definitely say um, have her wait. And both of my kids had to wait for theirs. And I was actually dating my tattoo artist when they got their first ones. Um, 
And they, he imposed rules on them. He's like, I'm not going to put a tattoo underneath your sleeve. You know, there were certain spots that he would or would not. Um, she only has a few more months. Yeah. You know what? Then I would just make it exciting for her. You know, just be like, um, yeah. And um, Tiggy says, Kelly, thinking it out over time, she'll um, be sure to really want it. Yeah. I would, again, just be like, hey, it's your birthday what you can do is go in and and make the appointment with her now. You know, just be like, she's going to be 18 in a couple of months and have her appointment already set up. And then that way, she, it, it's something that she can look forward to. Um, has anyone talked to you about tattoo? Hold on here. Tattoo bleeding on certain skin types. Um, I'm not too sure about certain skin types, but I know that for myself, I bleed more now the older that I've gotten. And it's just my skin and it's just a part of growing a little bit older, but I definitely bleed more and I heal differently. So, but my artists haven't been like, oh my gosh, she's gushing. I just notice it myself and it's never been... Um, it's never been an issue. Her boyfriend's dad is the artist. Perfect. I would still, you know, Kelly, I would still make the appointment and just kind of giving it to her. But all in all, I think that on something like this, like I said, it's an un, um, an unpopular opinion sometime, but I would definitely wait. All right. So my opinion for banana peppers and the banana peppers are the least painful out of a um out of the scale is your arm I, I think any of your lower forearm super easy place to get tattooed your outer arm up here on top super easy banana pepper banana pepper banana pepper any of these areas right here super easy now when you get underneath your arm this part right here not so bad. I would give this part like a jalapeno pepper. Going into here, that's going to go up to habanero. So you're going to have this little scale of pepper pain and it's going to be like, not bad, not bad, getting worse, getting worse. And all of a sudden you're going to be like, oh, my lanta. Because I remember laying there Hopefully I, I shave my arms, who knows? But I remember laying there, um, yeah, the, pup, the pepper pain scale is amazing. But I remember laying there and Dante had my hand up over my head like that because he was tattooing here. And I actually had a little pool of sweat in my hand. And I was like, Ugh! and he was like, he's like, this is so hard, Lonnie. He goes, I don't want to hurt you. And I'm like, Dante, you have to finish it, dude. You've already started right there. And there's no way you're going to not finish it. So definitely we go from, um, we go from banana and then banana, jalapeno, habanero, ghost. And, um, okay. And I'm going to talk to you about numbing cream in a minute. So I want, it's a really important part of this is the numbing cream. Lauren says, I thought as a redhead, I would bleed more, but I didn't, which is weird. What about elbow needle in the arm? What about elbow needle in the arm? Okay. Now elbow, this little spot right here, this is straight on ghost pepper. Your elbow is it's like a whole new level of pain. This right here um, is just, I remember sitting there and I wanted my elbow done. And I wanted it done because it's so funny and it's nothing against you guys or anything, but I was seeing like all these guys and they had all their sleeve done except for their elbow and they had like a big old naked elbow. And I'm like, no, if I'm going to get a sleeve, I want it completely covered. I want my elbow covered to prove that I can do this. So I was just, um, I, I was not prepared. Let's just put it that way. And so Brian was, um, Brian was sitting there and I think it makes the bird noise. <laughs> you know, the elbow is, was just so weird, but I can remember sitting there and Brian was trying to talk to me and I'm just like, um, no, don't talk to me, dude. Don't talk to me. 
I don't want to even pretend like you're here because right now you are the least favorite person on this earth. Just get my elbow done. And the not the funny thing, but not like a funny haha, but a really funny ironic part of your elbow is that it does not take color very well. So meaning if you go in and you have your elbow done, be prepared to go in and have it done again and have it done again. I had to go in three times to get this color packed in and each time was not better than the time before. Um, so that is the mo that is definitely a ghost pepper, probably one of, if not the most painful spot for me to get tattooed. And I had to get it tattooed three times to get that color in. So it is just an experience all amongst itself. So for me personally, um, the only banana peppers I have, I would say again are my arms and may yeah just my arms those are the only ones I'm getting more laugh out now and now I know to take the day for my self-care absolutely absolutely I always say take the day off after your tattoo because your body goes through a lot of trauma I mean we know consciously that we're going in and we're asking for this tattoo and we're going to end up with this beautiful art design. But what our body doesn't understand is what our subconscious doesn't understand is that the pain is intentional. So your body is going to be like, oh my gosh, pain receptors, charge! And they're going to go down there and they're going to try to help out and they're going to do all sorts of things to your body. And that takes a toll on you and you're going to be tired after a tattoo and you're going to need to rest after a tattoo. And the older you get, the more you need to rest. It is just, to me, it's like if I get a tattoo, I take the next day and I just kind of recuperate. And that's just how it goes for me. Okay, so the next we have is jalapeno peppers. So my jalapeno pepper, I will say my left hand and not my right hand but my left hand a jalapeno pepper is basically where your pain you can feel it but you can breathe through it it's a pain but it's like you can still have a conversation you can still be like yep yeah, nope <sighs> okay no I feel like I'm getting a tattoo okay but you can still converse you can still talk and you can still do all everything that you need to do so a jalapeno pepper is my left hand. Um, another one, it's behind my ear. I did not like behind my ear. Now, I don't think it was like really super painful. I just didn't like the... Med Medusa, thank you so much. I just didn't like the sensation. I say that getting your behind your ear or your head tattooed, it's like feeling a cavity on the from the outside in it was just like and it didn't feel great but it didn't feel good so I definitely say behind my ear was a jalapeno now another jalapeno spot for me was my lower back and it's not like it hurt a whole lot but it definitely was not like that kind of pain um that where I had to sit there and be like okay Lonnie it's okay just breathe and it's going to be okay. So these, this really quick is the free people. This is called the high roller jumpsuit. Okay. Linda says I fell asleep during my upper arm tattoo. Yes. Like my forearms, my arm, it was just so, it was relaxing. Let, let's just put it that way. And I've never actually fallen asleep but I've definitely kind of gone into that minute, that meditative state where I'm just like, oh, and that were my arms. So our next pepper is a habanero pepper. Now on a habanero pepper, that's the kind of pain where you're like, okay, I can talk. I just don't want to talk. I can breathe, but I'm going to think about holding my breath, which isn't the thing to do. A habanero pepper is the, the kind of pain where I'm like, just go with it, Lonnie. You're going to get through it. This is not going to last forever. You're going to be fine. All right. Thank you for my pepper. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Laura. So for me, 
the right hand was a habanero pepper. My right hand hurts so much more than my left hand. And I've talked to Brian about this. And part of the reason is because um, there was so much, um, there was just so much ink he had to put in and shading. And it was just like over and over and over again. Maggie, this part, this area right here of your shoulder, I would put it as like a jalapeno. I would say up on top and your collarbone is a habanero. That hurt. I mean, right here where I have some tattoos right on my collarbone, that hurt. And to me, that was a habanero. And it was just like one of those things where it's like, oh, okay, not bad. Just like the underarm, you're sitting here and you're like, yeah, not bad. Oh yeah, no, that's getting a little worse. And then you get up to the top, you're like, habanero, habanero. And so it's, it's, it's sometimes we think of like when we're getting a tattoo that it's going to be universal. Like when you start your tattoo in one area and it's not very painful that the entire experience is going to be that way. But that's just not the way it is. I mean, you can start your tattoo in one non-painful spot and end it in a really painful one. So you have to be able to um, and I'm going to get more into this, but you have to be able to regulate your pain. And by that, I mean, a lot of times is when we're in pain, we have a tendency to shut down. We have a tendency to like, okay, I'm just going to hold my breath. Don't hold your breath. You're going to pass out. What you need to do is you just need to be like, breathe through your nose and exhale out during those really painful moments because you just got to keep your oxygen flowing and it gives you something to do. Now, when you're sitting there and you are, um, yeah. And, um, Dottie Ann says that it's an absolutely different exp pain experience for everybody. But if you're sitting there and you're concentrating on that pain, if you're sitting there and you're concentrating, you'd be like, that hurts, that hurts, that hurts, that hurts you're going to, it's going to hurt worse. I'm going to tell you that right now, because for one thing, your breathing is not going to be regulated and that's all you're focusing on. So if you are getting a tattoo that is in a super painful spot, again, work on your breathing, wear something comfortable, bring music, talk to your artist, bring a friend, just do anything to kind of keep your mind off of that really painful spot. Um, Melissa says, I pushed the pain into my feet once. Oh, I pushed the pain into my feet once and it was bad foot cramp. Yeah, you know what? And what happens is, is that we tense up. And so you're sitting there and you're in pain. You're like, and you're just like this. And then all of a sudden it's like your blood's not circulating the way that it's supposed to. Breathe through your nose, exhale through your mouth. That's the kind of breathing that I learned during yoga. And that's what you want to do. And you want to fill up your whole chest cavity. Just. And you know what? If your artist is a talkative artist, you're going to just have to be like, you know what? I'm going to have to just concentrate on this moment. And I'm going to concentrate on my breathing so I don't move around. And you have to have that conversation with your artist. Now, Brian and I, um, and Brian Dell is my artist who's done both of my arms and so many of my tattoos, but he and I are like good enough friends that he could always tell when he was getting into an area that was more painful because of the way I was talking. So then he would talk more. He would keep my mind concentrating on the subject instead of the pain. So you want to make sure that you have some sort of, um, like fallback kind of situation, like breathing or somebody there with you to get you through those really painful spots. Now, okay, a habanero, no, I'm sorry, we're up to ghost peppers. Again, a ghost pepper is just something to where you're like, I don't want to talk. I don't want to converse with anybody. I am not a nice person at this moment. I just want to get through this tattoo pain. I don't have a whole lot of them, but the ones that I do have, again, is my elbow right here. Just this right, right there on my elbow. That was a ghost pepper. 
my stomach. I have my lower stomach tattooed um, below my belly button and right underneath my, um, my panty line. The entire bottom part of my stomach is tattooed. It hurt. I did not want to talk to anybody while I was getting tattooed there. I felt like, I'm like, where are you tattooing me? Because I could feel the, la- the pain all the way down into my leg. I absolutely love, hello, Sharon. I absolutely love my stomach tattoo. It was absolutely a ghost pepper. And Brandon, my youngest son, has his complete stomach done. And it is just blasted. And out of the whole family, he wins on having the biggest ghost pepper tattoo. But that was a very painful spot. And then the last ghost pepper tattoo that I have was a complete shock that it was this painful because I had no idea. And that is my calf. I think calves are probably one of the most unpleasant spots to get tattooed. For one thing, I'm laying on my stomach and that was super uncomfortable. I mean, Brian's hanging out by my feet talking to me and I'm like, I can't hear you. Why are you talking to me? And he's like, I'm trying to keep you entertained. I'm like, don't talk to me. Just do what you need to do and let me get out of here. And so laying on the table is uncomfortable and then it hurts like no other and your leg is going to twitch. That your your calves are full of um, Maggie says you are my hero. I tell you, I got I got some stories, but your your calf is full of nerve endings. So you know Brian's sitting there and he's tattooing me as I'm laying on my stomach, not wanting to talk to them. Um, oh, bye, Lauren. I'll see you over on the other one. So I'm laying there and my leg would just be like boink. It would just, it would, um, it would jump. It was jumping all over the place. And I pride myself on sitting really still. Maddie says, what's a good beginner spot, Lenny? I want my first one, but don't know where. You know what? I would put it on your upper, your upper arm. Um, that way you can hide it if you want. And flying Irish mama. Thanks. I'll have to fly. Bye, thank you for joining. Um, I would say there or your thighs. And it really depends on um, how much you want it to be visible. But I think your arms are absolutely one of the easiest places to start. So I'm sitting there with Brian and my leg is twitching. And again, like I said, I really pride myself on sitting really well for my artist. To me, it's like I am my biggest competitor. I'm like, okay, Lonnie, let's see how still you can set. Um, uh, oh, so, okay, the, on, um, okay. So, not too sure what that comment meant, but I'm going to continue. So, I, and I'm sitting there, and, and I was just so bummed that my leg, um, that my leg was twitching around. So, I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And he's like, Lonnie, stop apologizing. He goes, it's not that big of a deal. He goes, I know why it's doing it. I know it's going to do it. And I'm hold, you know, I'm holding your leg down. And I'm like, wow, he really is. And I had not noticed because I was so concentrating on my, my breathing and just getting through it. He was actually, when he was tattooing, he was like, had his complete arm on my leg and then tattooing like this because what he was doing is is he was holding my leg down so when it twitched he wouldn't be it wouldn't be knocking his hand around so i'm like oh yeah no you've done this before i can see that and so i got my left calf tattooed by brian and then shortly thereafter brian or austin maples tattooed my right calf So I'm just like, what is it with me and being a glutton for pain and getting my calves tattooed? So I was like, okay, let's see if Austin does the same thing because I knew my leg was going to twitch around. And sure enough, here's Austin. He's just kind of laying on my leg and he's tattooing away. 
And I'm like, so you're, you, I, I go, I apologize for the twitching. He's like, no, and he goes, I got you. He goes, I can tell when it's coming. And I'm like, that is so cool. And that's the kind of tattoo artist that you want to have. You want to have that kind of tattoo artist to where you can be like, oh my gosh, I am so sorry. And they're like, no, we got you. We know how to um, compensate for these kind of things. And I am so incredibly grateful for my amazing artists because not only did they make the experience better, they made it to where I didn't have to worry about it. And they knew that I was beating myself up, um, th that I was beating myself up for twitching. And they're like, no, you are so amazing. You said so well, don't worry about it. Everybody does this. And then I'm such an overachiever. I'm like, well, if everybody else does it, that just means I'm not going to do it. So I'm sitting there in my brain and I'm like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And then my leg's like, ha, 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 watch me. Blink. And so again, sometimes your body will, hello, Teresa. Sometimes your body will absolutely do it. Do, it will absolutely do what it wants to do, regardless how much you, that you're telling your body not to do it. So my ghost peppers, again, is my elbow, my stomach, and my calf. Now, um, this says sooner it will strike, don't stay in the two. Yes, um, I use sunscreen all of the time. So another spot, what was I going to say? Now I got thrown off. Oh, one spot that I did not think it was as bad as I thought it was going to be because I went in thinking that my shin was going to be horribly painful and it was surprisingly not. I, for some reason, was thinking that since I have that shin bone going all the way down the front of my leg, that that was going to hurt and the actual shin part did not hurt the meaty kind of calfy part, that one hurt. So you can, if you're doing like anything on your leg, you can start in the front and you're just fine. And by the time you get around to your back, you're gonna be sitting there having to do these breathing exercises. So go in and have your little, um, have your little plan all worked out. But ask your artist. I mean, be really upfront and honest with your artist. Be like, hey, what's your opinion on the pain scale? And they're going to come back and they're going to be like, yeah, everybody's different. And you'd be like, yeah, you know what? I know everybody's different, but what's your personal experience? And they'll give you an answer. So then that way you can kind of like, you know, brace yourself. Uh, Maddie says, my friend tattooed around her knee and she said that that was horrible. Yes. Any time that you get close to your knee, it is a, um, that's a new experience. I don't have my knees tattooed, but I've heard um, that it um, is just about like tattooing your elbow. Um, so, nope, I buzz my own hair, but thank you very much. So I've heard that it is just like your elbow. Now, um, I have my right calf is tattooed all the way up into the bend of my, my knee. Thank you for my strawberry. Like it's not in the actual bend, but it's like right up towards the top. And I could feel that the closer it got to my actual knee, the more that it was hurting. I did my knee. It wasn't bad at all, but my ankle hurt like a mother. Yes, I have them. The, my right calf sleeve is all the way to the like right underneath my knee all the way down to my ankles so I have that experience at the top and on the bottom now I've asked both Brian and um yes thank you for my little heart gifts so I've asked both Brian and Austin where they thought the most painful spots to get tattoos now, neither one of them had tattoos here, but they both came, um, okay, that's, but thank you. Um, this is a, not, this is a, a video today about tattoos, not about buzz hair, but thank you very much. Okay, so I asked them where the most painful spot was, and they both agreed, 
and they both gave me the same answer and that was your behind your actual cheeky part of your behind was the most painful um, like I said neither one of them have tattoos there but they have both tattooed there and from the experience and from everything that they have learned they have said the absolute number one most painful spot is your buttocks and I'm like well I guess that's just another reason for me to not get tattooed there because I love tattoos but I also too know that my body's changing so if I were to get a tattoo there it would be like um it would be like because by my that's where my behind is going um Pamela says hey there sorry um um so it says right there so Pamela says hey all sorry if this is a repeat question and don't worry about that um, how old were you when you got your first tattoo? I was 30 and I was just getting out of a bad um, divorce and I got barbed wire around my ankles just to signify where I was in life and where I never wanted to be again. Um, I'm 41 thinking about getting my first one. Pamela, I say do it. There is no, um, there is no age limit on getting your first tattoo. Just find a good tattoo artist talk to them make sure that your skin is um definitely like it ha doesn't have any sun damage and go for it you're gonna love it and i'm gonna tell you right now your first tattoo will lead to a second tattoo will lead to a third a fourth and a fifth there i, I mean i've i've asked this question before and i kind of got like a little bit of a sarcastic answer but I'm like, I don't understand how people get just one tattoo. You know, if I have one, I, I couldn't stop. And people were like, well, that's because, um, well, that's because I, I don't have the money. I'm like, yes, I get it. This is a hypothetical thing. If you had all the money in the world, would you get more than one tattoo? And everybody I've ever asked that says, yes, I would get more. So it is such a cool experience and I know that you'll love it and just get one and plan on getting another one. Okay, so we have a question here and Lainey says, what's wrong with sun damage for tattoos? If you, if you are my age and your skin is sun damaged, what will happen is when they go in and they start tattooing, it's gonna, it's called a blowout. And basically what that is, is that your skin doesn't have that collagen and that moisture and that plumpness for the ink to stay where they're putting it. And it just spreads underneath the top layers of your skin. So you'll have like a little bit of a bruising around the outlines. And that's just for real sun damaged skin. Now, if you have any concerns about your skin before you go in, I absolutely say sit down again and talk to your artist and point blank be like, can my skin handle this tattoo? And your artist should be able to take a look at your skin and tell you 100% whether or not they think that it's going to, um, to last. And you can always, again, if you have any concerns, get a small test, get a small little ink test before you get this whole big old tattoo. If your test stays where you want it, you know your skin is fine. If your test starts going like, then you, you might have a problem and you're gonna wanna move it. Linda says, getting my 17th tattoo in July got my first to celebrate my divorce too. It's a great way to celebrate divorces. Okay, the Shredder Mohawk says, when I see someone with a lot of tattoos, like sheets of them um, on their arms and stuff. Okay, when I see someone with a lot, of, a lot of tattoos, like sheets of them on there and stuff. Um, it says, yeah, well, you know what, scars, getting a tattoo is totally different than like getting a cut, all right? A cut is, goes much deeper. A tattoo is just kind of like a really weird kind of sensation. Uh, Maddie says really quick, how do you feel about numbing cream and have you ever used it? Um, da, da, da. Um, okay, so numbing cream, uh, that's a big one. 
Numbing cream is a way to combat tattoo pain. I mean, it's just a thing. There's products and it's something that a lot of people use. Now, have I ever used numbing cream? No, I never have. Would I use numbing cream? No, I don't want to use numbing cream because I want the experience of getting the tattoo. I want to know that I was able to sit there, enjoy the experience and feel every single moment of that two experience. Does that mean that I think anybody that uses numbing cream has any sort of different experience? No, absolutely not. It is each to their own. Just like I wouldn't tell somebody what tattoo to get, <coughs> just like I'm not gonna tell anybody how to heal their tattoo. I mean, I'll give you, um, oh, Kelly, thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful day too. I'm, I would never tell anybody how to heal it. I'll give you suggestions, but it's up to you whether or not you would want how you want to heal your tattoo. And it's the same thing as numbing cream. If you are sitting there and you're like, I want to use it, but I don't think like I, my tattoo is going to be as good as somebody else who doesn't use it. I, I don't get that. And I don't subscribe to that sort of that sort of idea because we have so can you tell i'm getting ready to go into a rant but we have so many restrictions put on us about so many different things all right it's like childbirth i had epidurals and some people don't uh, agree with that they don't want an epidural good for you have your kid how you want to have it I didn't want to go through that pain. I had complications and I had an epidural. So I still think I had the same. I had my experience of childbirth and nobody's going to tell me it's any different than theirs. So it's the same thing as numbing cream. It's if you want it and that's the experience you want, use it. I'm not going to think badly about you. It's not my place to think badly about you. So with that said, if you are going to use numbing cream, it is extremely important. And I cannot tell you how important this is, but you need to talk to your artist and you need to tell your artist that you're going to be using numbing cream. And the reason of that is, is it because it changes how they apply their ink. All right. They need to know whether or not you have numbing cream on because they might have to put one more layer of color. They might need to adjust something. But if you go into the tattoo shop and you sit down in the chair for your appointment and you have numbing cream and you don't tell them, and if your tattoo turns out any different way than what you thought it was going to, then that's on you for not telling your artist, all right? That artist needs to know everything that they need to know about the skin that they're about to tattoo. So it is on you to tell your artist. Now, my recommendation, just like asking your artist, what do you want to do for aftercare? I think you should talk to your artist before going in and being like, hey, you know what? I don't want to just sit here and, and suffer pain, so I want to use numbing cream. Which one do you suggest? and let them give you the suggestion as to which numbing cream that they like to use while they're tattooing on your skin, period. That is the end of my rant on that one. And I just, again, I just, I, I don't like the simple fact um, that we sit there and we judge people for using numbing cream. I'm just not gonna do it. Thank you for my chilies. So Linda, um, uh, do, 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 do. So, um, okay. So Linda says, yeah, someone told me once that numbing cream ruined their tattoo. And I have had artists tell me that they don't think that the ink goes into the skin as well when people are using numbing cream. And again, that is something that I'm not a tattoo artist. I have a lot of tattoos. I'm just not a tattoo artist. So I can't, I can't tell you what's right or wrong. I can tell you what I believe in and what I have 
heard. Now, they're coming out with all sorts of new products. I mean, Mad Rabbit has one. If how it affects the skin, I have no idea. But it is a super, super important piece of information to know because a lot of people don't know that it has the possibility of affecting the way the ink is applied to the skin. So this is a PSA. This is a public service announcement to let you know that if you are going to use, um, that if you are definitely going to be using numbing cream, then you need to let your artist know. Point, point, period, end of story. Um, you should also make sure that you um, don't have an allergic reaction to numbing cream. Absolutely. The last thing you want to do is you, you don't want to sit there and put numbing cream on, start having an allergic reaction, and then have any sort of issue with your tattoo. Now, I've never used numbing cream, but this is what I have heard. So again, this is just what I have heard. But I heard that numbing cream, while you have to put it on like 30 minutes before you go, I've heard that it actually um, stops the numbing really quick. So you're going to be sitting there. You'll be like, this is great. And then all of a sudden, you be like, oh, my gosh, what happened? And you're, I mean, this is just the stories I've heard. All right. So don't come at me and be like, no, Lonnie, that's wrong. Because, again, these are just what I have heard. But I've heard that it stops working faster than it starts working. So what you're doing is, is you're not giving your body time to kind of level out with your pain because you know how it is when it, um, so yeah, Beth, you've heard that before also. So you know how it is when you start your tattoo and you're like, oh my gosh, and you just get like this flood of like, that hurts. And then all of a sudden your body is doing what it's supposed to be doing. And, um, uh, Lainey, yes, I do have a lot of tattoos. So your body's doing what it's supposed to be doing when you don't, when you're not using, um, the numbing cream, you know, little pain receptors are working and they're, they're, they're helping you get through the pain. And if you have numbing cream on and it just wears off really fast, you haven't given your body the, the enough time to actually build up those pain receptors. So it's going to be like, this is great. And then all of a sudden you'd be like, oh my gosh, this is not great. And I've heard that the pain level is pretty intense once your numbing cream wears off. So what happens is, is that now your numbing cream has worn off and you're, you're starting to get really uncomfortable. You have to stop your tattoo. You have to reapply. You have to wait those 20 minutes and then you have to start your tattoo again. So those are some of the pitfalls for using um, numbing cream that I have heard of. And that's just, again, my information to share on to you. Um, I've never used numbing cream, but I've heard that. Yes, and those are the stories and those are the research that I have come up with. Again, not a personal experience. I mean, I can tell you how much the tattoo hurt, but I can't tell you firsthand my experience with numbing cream because, again, I don't use it. Um, let's see here. Maddie says, I want to have a lot of tattoos, like many different styles. I'm just scared. Um, it's not cohesive. So what? I, I, I have different tattoo styles all over my body. All right. I have, um, whatever style you want to call this one, realism, because these look like real flowers. I have a patchwork of black and gray on my left hand. I have an American traditional calf tattoo. And then I have a, just a, my left calf is just a jumble of different things that I like. And to me, I don't, again, I don't want to be stuck in a box of what I'm supposed to be doing. These are my tattoos on my body telling my story. My story is not cohesive. It, 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 it has different feelings and it has different emotions and it needs different visual reminders to match my story. And I am not going to buy into the philosophy that if you start with one American traditional tattoo, that then that's all you can get because it's not the truth. Now, if you want an all over theme of something, that's a beautiful tattoo. But if you don't, Again, how many times can I say it? It is your journey of self-expression and you can do whatever it is that you want to do. Um, 
let's see here. Do, do, do. Yeah, as so long as y so long as they make you feel good, that's all that matters. And but if you've noticed along with our conversations, this is a reoccurring theme in very many different places of our lives. And that is is that society has these rules and we think that we all have to um, that we all have to abide by it. And it, it's not the case. So long as it's on your body and you love it, that's what we need to abide to. Um, Courtney says, I hate it when people ask me what my tattoos mean. Yes. And Courtney, I don't know about you, but I've never had anybody with tattoos ask me that question. I've had people without tattoos ask me that. And truthfully, it all depends on the person, the way they ask it, and the energy that they are producing, whether or not I will answer that question. Because if you're going to give me one of these, and we all know what I'm talking about, if you give me one of these, what does that mean? I'm going to look at you and tell you it, don't, it, doesn't, it, it means nothing to you because I'm not going to tell you. This is my story. Nowhere did I sign any sort of agreement that by getting tattooed, I need to share my life story. Mm -mm. I, I've signed waivers, but that wasn't part of the waiver. So if you're going to come up to me again with that, that, that attitude, I don't have to share my story. I don't have to tell you anything about me. It's my story. And if I want to share it with you, I will gladly share it with you. But nobody's going to force that. And I don't feel like I need to answer to anybody. And I think that that's what it is. It's that whole like, I, I want to understand why you did that. And I deserve to know why you've done that. Well, you know what? I was going to say a name, but I ain't going to say a name. But I was like, no, no, you don't need to know anything about me. Other than, uh, the only thing you need to know me at this particular moment is that you're irritating me. That's what you need to know about me. And I point blank keep that attitude. And that is exactly what we need to do with our bodies and our tattoos. We don't owe anything to anybody. You know, I owe something to my children. Uh, you know, I owe it to Indy to provide for her, but I don't owe anything to the lady at the grocery store who's giving me that look, period. Um, I hate it when moms make their kids cover their eyes and tell them that they are uh, allowed to look at, to not, that they aren't allowed to look at them. Wow. Okay, so let me repeat this one because it says, Ray says, I hate it when moms make their kids cover their eyes or tell them that they aren't allowed to look at them. I would have a really hard, um, I would have a really hard time not responding to that. And part of me is like, I wouldn't want to say, I, I wouldn't want to do anything in front of the kids. And I wouldn't say, you know what, truthfully, I'm going to tell you right now, if it was in front of kids or something like that, I probably wouldn't say anything because I think it's unfair to the kids. It, you know what, just because they have a horrible person as a mother, I am not going to say anything in front of their kids. But I tell you what, I, I, if I ever saw that person out again and those kids weren't around there, I would absolutely chew them up and spit them out because nobody is allowed to make you feel dirty. And that's what that person is doing. That person is trying to make you feel bad for that. You know, and the only thing you can do at that point is be like, wow, my kids are so fortunate that they don't have that kind of mother. All right. And they have, that's, that's what we have to remember at the end of the day. We are just really fortunate that we're not them. Pam says, are there any situations where you had to cover up your sleeve for a situation or have you never had to worry about this um, day and age? Um, you know what, Pamela, when I first started in escrow, it was back in, um, 2008, I had to cover up my shoulder, my little flower right here. Um, when the corporate, when the big, big wigs from corporate came in and other than that, no, I've never covered them up. And truthfully, I'm very fortunate that I didn't have to for work, but with the day and age and everything, then yes. And Here's the thing is, is I'm not immune. I mean, people stare at me all the time. And sometimes they stare at me in a very nice way. And sometimes they stare at me in a very not nice way. 
But I'm, you know what? Truthfully, I don't care one way or the other. The people that stare at me in a not very nice sort of way, they get, they get me doing like, what are you looking at? You know what? I, I, I could stare at you for you being like all judgy. So um, Sharon says, gotta go. Love you. Love you too. And that is, um, that's just about the worst of that. Linda says, I had a guy in a bar once ask me if he could touch my tattoo. Of course, I said no. Linda, that's funny because on TikTok, we just got a comment here from uh, Marie Line Munchkin. I think that's your username. It says, I hate it when people think it's okay to touch my tattoos. They don't even ask. Here's the thing. Okay, as a person, as a um, individual on this earth, there is no circumstance except other when the fact that our parents are touching us, that anybody has the right to put their hands on us. Zero, zero, zero right. And if somebody even gets close enough to touch me, this is me, uh -uh. personal space. If I can touch you with my hands, that means you're too close. I am a weirdo when it comes to my personal space. If I'm sitting there at the grocery store and I'm doing a little checkout and the lady behind me is like breathing down my neck, I'll turn around and be like, can you back up? I mean, this is my spot. I am occupying my spot right here. And we need to have a voice. All right, I could feel a rant coming on, but we have a voice. We are allowed to hold up for ourselves. We are allowed to say, your presence near me is making me uncomfortable. And can you please back up? And you can look at somebody who's coming in to touch your tattoos and be like, don't touch me. Get your hands off of me. We have the right to say that. Because what happens is, is that we get this whole idea that by us holding up for ourselves, we're being aggressive or we're being mean. No, we're not. We are setting boundaries for ourselves when people can and cannot touch us. And it is just absolutely 100% imperative that we have the voice that matches that. So do not feel that holding up for yourself and telling people not to touch you is a, um, is a bad thing, because it's not. It really isn't. So we just have to be having that voice. And again, we have to tell ourselves by verbalizing our displeasure of their presence near us is not being aggressive. And it says, Maddie says, especially as a woman, we have to protect ourselves no matter what. Absolutely. Now, here's the thing. In, ladies, this is really important. It's unfortunate that this conversation even has to be brought up. But if somebody is coming in and touching you with just touching your arms to look at your tattoos and we can't protect ourselves from that what kind of energy are we projecting to these people who are looking to victimize us thank you for my heart we need it, it's sad but we need to be on alert to make sure that we can protect ourselves as much as possible and it's not like i walk into anywhere and i'm all like you know, but I'm always constantly aware of my surroundings. I try to stay aware of my surroundings. And it's just something that I, that was instilled in me as a kid that you have to protect yourself. And so I don't, I'm constantly looking to see who's behind me. I got one of those things. I am so weird about it that if I'm walking and there is a window, I'll use the window as a reflection to see who's behind me because I don't want people sneaking up on me and touching me. So it, it, sometimes I think, um, sometimes I just think that we feel like we don't have the right to protect ourselves. We're absolutely 100%. We have every single right to protect ourselves, period. End of story. Hoo ya. There you go. And just do it. No matter what your age, no matter what your gender, we have the right to protect ourselves. And I'm not telling you to go out there and be aggressive by any means, but I'm telling you that we have the right to use our voice and we have the right to hold up for ourselves. And we have the right when somebody is too close to us or says something derogatory, 
we can have a voice and be like, like the mom with the kids. We can be like, wow, that was really hurtful. You know what? What you said was a very mean thing to say, and that's not a good example for your children. You know what? We can say things like that. And again, just knowing that, um, that it's not aggression. Because I know a lot of times on social media, we see all of these videos and I'm always like, Ugh, I would never want to be like that. We see people, you know, they're called Karens and people are going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and they're yelling at strangers. This is not that. This is something totally different. We need to 100%, we need to know that our bodies and our space, we are allowed to protect it. And it's something that we need to teach our young children, our young ladies from a very early age that it is okay to say no. And it is okay to ask people to back up. 100%, gush. I'm all like, dun, 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 dun. I'm all on fire. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But as you can tell, some things are really important to me, and I think that that's really important. And especially as you get older, I know, Karen, it's like, that. like I said, that's what they call them. And to me, it's, um, I don't, I try not to use that reference anymore, just because I think it's unfair to people who are really nice and happen to have that name. So I do try to reference it in a different way because I don't want anybody generalizing me over my appearance. No, but it's the truth, Karen. You know, and that's just the thing. It's, it's like, it, it's, it's, absolutely, um, it's absolutely the truth. And I do, do really try to not reference that because I also don't know if you've noticed or not, but when I mentioned the tattoo on my back, I did not call it the bleep stamp because I think that that's a derogatory term. And I'm not going to say anything derogatory about myself. It's a lower back tattoo. It is nothing else. And if whoever made that um, name up wasn't doing it to lift women up and be like, wow, you're amazing and strong. Let's call it a beep stamp. No, they were, it's derogatory. And I'm not going to partake in that either. And we have the choice. We all have conscientious choices, whether or not we are going to participate in this or not. All right, Pamela says, how did you decide on your designs? Did you draw them? Have you, or do you have the artist on a paper mock-up first or just describe and let your artist surprise you? You know what? Unfortunately, Pamela, it's like yes to all of those. I have had, I gave Austin Maples um, a complete artistic freedom for, um, for my calf sleeve. He got to do whatever he wanted, and I was absolutely pleased on that. I drew up my own butterfly. This is two butterflies that look at like one. I drew that one myself. Um, I've had artists where I'm like, hey, Brian, you know what? I want this. And he's like, oh, let me draw that up for you. And I've loved it. And then also, too, I've sent um, my artists um, stuff that I have found on Pinterest. So it can be all different ways and it really depends on what you want, who your artist is. And, but I definitely think we need to be a collaboration, um, in our own designs because they are absolutely going to be on our bodies for a very long time. All right. I have been all sorts of chitty chatty today, man. I tell you, you start getting me on a subject and I'm just like, blah, 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 blah. But I'm very passionate about this and I'm very passionate about people and the rights for us to protect ourselves, as you can see. Um, let's see, beautiful artist, look up JNL Tattoo. He's a celebrity tattoo artist. Ooh, I will. I will, because I'm always looking for a new tattoo. So, I, and again, just remember, remember you have your right to protect your space. It's your space. You know what? You were born with it. It's yours. Protect it whether with by words, I don't go in, you know, I saw this TikTok the other day and I absolutely love it. But um, I absolutely love this TikTok. It's this bunny rabbit. It's this big bunny rabbit. And the lady's holding like another rabbit and it comes up, it's just like, and it's like trying to, <laughs> trying to like hit the lady. And that reminds me of what I do when somebody stands too close to me. I'm just like, so 
just embrace that and go for it. So I have to run y'all. I am going to be going and I'm going to be doing some filming today. Tomorrow I'm popping on here without my foundation again. But what we're doing tomorrow is I'm going to do the underpainting. So I'm going to put on some contour and some highlighter. Then I'm going to be putting on my foundation and then I'm going to be putting on some blush that isn't a complete train wreck and stains everything. So I hope you can come back for that tomorrow, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I'm going to go over this really super easy, lightweight foundation idea that I think anybody can do. So remember, be bright, be bold, be brave, have a great Tuesday, be safe, be kind, and protect yourself. And I will see you all tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Love you.